Hey everybody. What a perfect moment to do a video on egotism. Uh, I decided to wear this hat because you'd have to let your ego down quite a ways to wear a hat this lame. <laughs> it's such an 80s hat. It's a billabong hat I found at Goodwill the other day for like, what, three or four bucks? And I thought, how sweet. Anyway, this kind of fits the joke. This one was about egotism and materialism, and at first I thought that they might be intertwined, and the more I thought about it, the more I realized that they are mutually ex exclusive from each other in the sense that um, even a person that has absolutely no material goods can be egotistical, and we know that well. Now, <clears throat> the reason why this subject comes up, and it's really been we weighing on me heavy lately, is because, like many of you, I've been searching for the meaning of life for a long time, and I realized today that, well, not today, but recently more, that um, I've, you know, sometimes I think, well, I have a long way to go, you know, there's a lot of people that are way ahead of me in this game, and I'll just keep searching, and I noticed something today, that people who make big discoveries in their life, let's take the born-again Christian, for example, he's the most blatant, outspoken Christian, because he's just found it, he's been missing this all this time, and then he's like, oh my god, you've got to know this. Well, the Christians who have had it all their, all their life have been like, yeah, well, what's new? You know, I've always known that. It can be a major revelation to one person and just be another person's lifestyle. Well, this also happens with um, spirituality in the sense that I've seen some gurus and spiritual teachers that I've listened to speak, and they have this wild notion about, you know, their new discoveries. Um, Ram Das was a perfect example. He was, you know, he was a really smart man and a, and a, and a very spiritual man, but he, he had his issues that were um, rooted in his youth, uh, how he originally went to Harvard, and he was pushed into, um, you know, being that productive citizen, that guy, that, that worker be, you know, to do his thing. And then once he had mushrooms, he found that other side. And that wasn't until his later college years. Well, for me... I wasn't a professor when I discovered mushrooms. I was like 14 years old. I took so much acid when I was a kid. And it opened my eyes to this new side of life. And I've taken it for granted since then. I learned about ego loss when I was about 14 years old. Uh, 15, I think, maybe. I read a book, The Psychedelic Experience, by, uh, I think it was Timothy Leary. He did it based on the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And I didn't even understand what ego was at that point. I didn't even know what an ego was. Seriously, I was that young. And I just thought, well, an ego, ego, okay, that's something I see. You, And I knew right away I could relate to it because I'd lost my ego on acid so many times. <laughs> and from then on, I used it as just kind of a root to my lifestyle. And it became such an a integral part of the way I live that I forgot that I even had it. So now when I hear these people talk about things, I'm like, I take that for granted. Just like the Christian takes for granted what the born-again Christian is telling him. It's like, oh yeah, I've always known that. And I'm just having some of my thoughts that I've had for the last 25 years reiterated to me. And like, oh, okay, yeah, that is true. Oh, I forget about this sometimes. So I do this on ego because I've been battling with certain ideas in my own mind over the last several years. And mainly one of them has been, if there's ego, okay, Materialism is based on having goods, but it doesn't necessarily have to be things. It can be services or whatnot, but it's just need of an external source of stimulation, let's say. So people desire material goods and material services, and they think it's going to make them happy. Now, most of us know this isn't true. So what happens is the extremist takes the stance of, well, I... I don't need material goods to be happy. I'm going to go live in a cave and be a monk, and I don't care about anything anymore because I've renounced the world. Now, to me, I've tried to process, process that in my head, and it doesn't work um, for me. Now, it might work for some people, but what the reason what I mean by it doesn't work is the universe provided us as basically tentacles or feelers for the universe to kind of feel itself out and to understand itself. This is my belief anyway, to an extent. The universe created every animal and plant, not just us, you know, we think we're so special, uh, but everything has a consciousness and a general collective consciousness, the Jungian philosophy, if you will. Um, but um, everything has this being. I don't like to put labels on it, and I prefer not to take, you know, Hindu or Buddhist scripture or try to quote things. I just try to go from the heart, and this is what I'm saying, you know, we all know we have a different names for it, but it's this feeling of this God, and um, 
you understand what everything really means in life, but at the same time you have absolutely no idea what anything means. So, anyway, before I get too far off track, what it means is that we're all here as these eyes of the world, so to speak, and so these things that are provided for us, um, not just material goods, but services, but happiness, the things that we're entitled to, even drugs. Um, if a person wants to have a beer now and again, he doesn't have to punish himself and say, oh man, I shouldn't do that because it goes against the laws, the natural law. It's just not true. It doesn't work that way. Man discovers what he needs to discover. And this is the conclusion I'm coming to. And I haven't found any real philosophy that embraces this except Buddhism and Hinduism to an extent. And that's why I've kind of uh, gravitated towards that side, but they still have their own problems. In fact, you go through stages in your life where you reinforce yourself. And, but you change what certain things mean to you. For example, Buddhism, Buddhism says life is suffering to an extent. So I went through a period where I agreed, yes, life is suffering. And then I started to think, no, it's not. Life is what you make it. But then I understood what the life is suffering means. It doesn't really mean life is suffering. It just means that you go through suffering to feel the good. Life is ups and downs. Everything is down the middle path, the balance. So materialism is okay. As long as you're not obsessed with the materials. I should say, materialism isn't okay. Having material goods is okay. Being rich is okay if that's what you enjoy. But the thing is, most people who like material goods don't enjoy being rich. So that just doesn't even really cross most people's minds. Um, it'd be nice, but whatever. Most people are happy to just have enough to make them, you know, get them by. You don't have to renounce everything you have to be a happy person. Just because you have a lot of things doesn't mean that you have to fear losing them. You can say, well, today I have a whole record collection with a couple thousand cool records, and tomorrow if my house burns down and they all melt, and so be it. Just be prepared to deal with the consequences. So, back to the ego. That also has some play into this, because um, you should also embrace your ego. You don't have to be renounce your ego and have permanent ego loss. Having ego loss or going through an experience, whether it be psychedelic or a breakthrough or otherwise, having an ego loss experience makes you realize that you are in a bigger picture and that you aren't just an individual, that you're part of a whole. And ego is so important to some people that they will never let their guard down. So what you have to do is be able to use your ego. You don't have to look like a chump. You still need to dress decent. You still want to feel good about yourself because you want other people to take you seriously. You can't renounce um, you know, every material good and just walk around in a loincloth and never clean yourself or shave and say, oh, I'm a guru and have people respect you. So that's the point is that you need to respect yourself and you need to treat yourself well and you still have to blend in with society. And society as a whole has certain standards, and so we abide by those standards. The more we push against society, the more it pushes back on us. So we need to embrace what we have. It doesn't mean you have to love everything. It doesn't mean you have to like the way everything is, or even buy into everything. But don't be afraid to like yourself just because people say that you shouldn't have an ego. And don't be afraid to have things because people say that you shouldn't be a materialist. There is a middle way, there is a happy ground somewhere in there. For each person it may be different, and for one person you may be happy with a lot less than another. And so respect one another, and respect another person. If your neighbor wants to have two, three cars, and a motorcycle, and, and a bigger house, that's, that's his choice. Uh, if you want, um, if you want to live in a little one bedroom, you know, 800 square foot little place with, with no yard and, and own no furniture, then that's your choice too. But he shouldn't knock you down for being a small person any more than you should knock him down for having more. Because we all make choices and what we deem is important. So let your ego shine. Just don't let it dominate you. And be an individual. Because as soon as we let our materialism and our individualism and our ego go completely, we just become another number, and we might as well just be socialist zombies. Um, anyway, nothing against socialism. It's just another form to fail government like all the rest of them. You know, humanism is the form of government that works. And people need to just respect each other's views and realize that you and I, I'm looking into this camera, I mean, you're looking into the screen of your computer, and we're crossing paths in this invisible digital world through time. I'm making it right now. You're receiving it now. Weird. Anyway. <laughs>
<laughs> materialism, egotism. It's not something that you need to fret about. And it's not something you need to be completely concerned about. Just be fair to yourself and be honest with yourself and everything will fall into place. Namaste.